What's up WordPress nerds? In today's video, I wanted to go over why WordPress gets a bad name. So I've compiled a list of a common uh, complaints about WordPress, um, the reason why they are complaints, and then uh, just a little bit of my thoughts about each one of those items. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. All right, let's jump into it. So, like I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about why WordPress gets a bad name. Um, anytime that I bring up that I work with WordPress a lot, I usually hear a lot of moaning and groaning about, uh, you know, how WordPress is terrible in, in so many ways. And so I just wanted to kind of compile a list of things that I've heard and why I think that I hear that a lot and just some of my thoughts around it. So the first one here is uh, that WordPress is slow. Uh, so why would they even say that? Why, why would somebody say that WordPress is just inherently slow? Well, many WordPress sites are indeed slow. Um, WordPress's code base can be considered bloated and dated. So when people find that out, they just say that WordPress is slow. And many bloated themes and plugins are widely used. So um, kind of what I think about this. Um, many WordPress sites are slow, yes. Um, I think that... Well, let me just show this last piece. Bad, dog, bad dogs aren't born, they're made. Um, WordPress isn't slow out of the box. Um, there's nothing about, um, you know, the 2020 theme that I would consider, oh, this makes it a slow website. You load that up on any decent host and you're going to have a pretty fast site. Um, while WordPress's code base can be considered bloated and dated, what you see is kind of what you get on the front end is you do get a very powerful site that is relatively fast and can be even faster with proper caching and a proper host. Um, where I think the real problem is and why I included that kind of quote down there at the bottom is the third bullet point here is that I think many WordPress sites are slow because there are many bloated plugins and themes that make it slow. Um, themes that you buy off of theme forest usually have to do a lot. They have to cover a wide base of, of uses. So you can buy an agency theme or something like that. And it does just about everything. You have six different ways you can pull in, you know, uh, blog posts and each one has throw a different animation on it. It has eight different slider plugins for some reason, and it just loads in all these JavaScript libraries and has to do all these calculations to figure out how the site should just be rendered. So I think that yes, like WordPress kind of deserves that stamp, but not for the raw, not for because WordPress at its core is inherently slow, but it's what people typically do with WordPress that makes it slow. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so next up, WordPress security is terrible. Why do they say that? Um, well, up until recently, they supported PHP 5.2. Now it supports P, uh, now supports PHP 5.6.20. So yeah, when they were supporting PHP 5.2, that's a pretty old, <laughs> pretty old version of PHP. And, and now 5.6 is pretty darn dated. So like, um, there are security vulnerabilities in those versions of PHP and the fact that WordPress supports those makes WordPress more vulnerable to the security issues that were present in those PHP versions. Um, going back to kind of what I said in the last slide, many plugins and themes are the, usually the culprits of having security flaws in them. And that's kind of just what you get when you have such a large and wide and open community like WordPress is that has is that you can, you know, say anybody can make a plugin. There's no real strong, um, like, you know, verified publisher, uh, process or anything like that. Anybody can publish anything. Um, so usually if people are, you know, have such a wide base, you're going to have plugins and themes that have security issues with them. And it's completely up to, the uh, developer to maintain those. Now, WordPress, if they come and find out that your plugin does have a security issue, they will keep it from being redownloaded on the on the uh, on the on the repository, and then they'll they'll let all the people who are using that plugin theme know through the dashboard and things like that. So there's 
you know, measures in place. However, it gets that kind of bad rap is because, yeah, I mean, Elementor, a huge plugin that has millions and millions of installs had a, a problem recently that affected those millions and millions of sites where people could potentially have, you know, um, some of their information stolen. And so that was just a thing that happened. And that's a thing that happens actually fairly, fairly regularly. So therefore we get this WordPress has terrible security flag just, you know, kind of thrown out there. So that's why I think that it is, um, some of it I think is very valid, but I think WordPress's core security team has done an excellent job maintaining the security of core WordPress. And that's about as much as they can do. So I hats off to them. Um, finally, the WordPress is just a major target for hackers simply because it also occupies over 30% of the internet. So like it's pretty easy to find WordPress sites regularly and then just make that your target because of, you know, bullet point number two here is you can find lists of, you know, security vulnerabilities of plugins out there and, you know, hackers will find those and find sites that use those. So WordPress uses terrible coding practices. Um, so why would people say that? Uh, well, WordPress does mix up some of its, its coding practices. They have supported older versions of PHP. Um, certain areas of the code base were built at later times than others. And then so when they started using newer coding practices on certain sections, they haven't upgraded older sections because they needed to support um, or they had backwards compatibility with a PHP version. So it just kind of makes sense that those things ended up getting mixed and certain parts have been refactored and certain parts haven't. It's a very large ship to kind of turn. Um, so it makes just, it just makes sense that that's the way that it is. Um, it doesn't use an MVC architecture, doesn't enforce it on, you know, theme and plugin developers. So people don't really like that. And many plugins and themes simply deploy bad code. So there's kind of like two pieces here. There's, there are three pieces, I guess. So WordPress itself at its core, I would not say is simply bad code or anything like that. I think that it, the WordPress core team does an excellent job of keeping things, you know, well running and things like that. I've never really run into many issues where it's like, oh no, I as a theme or plugin developer simply can't do what I need to do because there's something wrong with the core. Like that's not something that I run into. Um, using an MVC architecture and enforcing that um, on, or forcing that on plugin and theme developers um, can be questionable. I mean, I think that it, it, it would be good overall to enforce that. I think that it would be good in to make those plugins and theme developers use that because I think it ultimately outputs better code. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to have that freedom to either use something like that or not. Um, there's a very good argument to be made about using functional programming over object oriented programming and things like that. So having WordPress come in and tell you how to do it, um, I have mixed emotions on. Uh, many plugins and themes deploy bad code. Yeah, is I think a very kind of another rampant issue in the WordPress community. You can kind of see if we were to draw the Venn diagram of all these issues, kind of like what's in the middle of this whole thing. Um, so I think that that is a totally valid point. There are many plugins and themes that to deploy bad, bad code and those, those pieces of code are on many WordPress sites. So, I mean, we can, yeah, there's all sorts of things I can go into on that, but I kind of want to keep this video on the short, short end. Um, and then finally, is just kind of a blanket thing that I heard is that WordPress developers get lower pay and less opportunities. That probably was the case at some point. Um, and maybe a little bit now, but gosh, like I've, I've been working with WordPress for over seven, eight years now, and I have never really found myself wanting for, for freelance clients or wanting for a salaried position. I, I always tend to find those that I'm looking for and the pay has been able to support my family. Um, and then on top of that, I mean, kind of look what's going on around us. Like Google is hiring WordPress developers because now they have a WordPress internal team. Um, Bluehost hires people that um, work specifically on the core. Like there are major companies 
out there that are hiring very specifically people who know WordPress, not to mention all the people who want, you know, freelance or for freelance um, WordPress developers. So that is a huge thing that people want um, because they own the own the code that it's run on. They don't have to pay a cut to WordPress in order to run their stuff on the, on on WordPress or anything like that. So no, I I honestly don't agree with this. I think that there are tons and tons of opportunity and it's not going anywhere. Like that's the other side of thing. It's like, you can take a a snapshot of, you know, the opportunities right now. And I think that there's a ton of them and I see in the future that there's going to be even more and the trend it's trending that way. WordPress is going up, not down. So I don't, I didn't, I see, I see this a lot. I see this, this argument a lot and I just, I straight up don't agree. But uh, anyway, hopefully that this kind of gives you a little bit of a picture of, of, of what's going on and, and why WordPress gets a bad name and just some of my thoughts about it, some of my ramblings. So thank you for sticking around and listening to me complain about things for a minute. Um, I hope it just gives you a little bit of insight into kind of um, this and hopefully it can kind of encourage you to... Uh, learn more about why these things are said and and hopefully you can kind of defend them if if they're being brought up um but ultimately i hope this gave you some sort of learning out of this whole thing so i appreciate you watching um thank you to all of my patrons who have been supporting me we released our first exclusive video a couple weeks back and we're still kind of gathering uh, up some votes on about what we should make the next exclusive video about um, I think that there's going to be a lot of good information in these next couple videos. So if you are interested in becoming a patron, the link is down below. But again, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next one.